disturbing like we did a hundred times before. So, hello and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping and wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So, I got beginning questions about down markets, down markets. How do you do this? So, I'm actually speaking about this at length at tonight's RIA meeting in uh, where the hell did we meet in Lindbrook. Do we meet in Lindbrook? Um, we meet every month. I, my RIA, the Nassau County RIA, you can go to it at uh, meetup.com slash nassau-county. RIA, we meet twice a month. Once for a monthly meeting like we have tonight and once for, um, sorry, this key. Once at a property that I'm doing. Uh, I don't have that schedule for next the next one yet, but I'll, we'll meet soon. So people ask me about a down market. So a couple things. I'm going to just give you the overview of what I'm talking about tonight. So, first of all, do not wait for the perfect market. So what this means is that everybody's got their own stupid ideas about what's going on in the market. So people ask me what I do. I say, I'm a house flipper. It's the easiest thing. They all go, ooh, wow. And then I get some kind of thought after very often, which is stupid. Like, uh, well, it must be very tough right now. Or that must be amazing for you right now. Uh, sometimes they just say something nice. Like, that sounds great. Um, but I know many people who just aren't doing this, getting into the business, because they feel like, well, the market's not good, or the market's too hot, or there's too much competition, or there's not enough competition, or there's not enough deals, or there's too many deals, whatever the hell it is. You can always find a reason to not get in, always. Um, the market shouldn't determine whether you go in. You can make money in any market. The good people made money in any market. Now, I know people, now, I've only been doing this for 10 years, but I know people that did it through the crash in 2008. To be honest, some of these guys went bankrupt, but they all are fine and they're back doing business now. Um, so and there, obviously there are people who went out of business for sure then, because if you were over leveraged and the bottom dropped out and where you were, right, which really wasn't much in New York, but in a lot of places in this country where things are flying crazy like Florida, and then the bottom dropped out. So right now we're sort of in a, a microcosm of that in that certain parts of the country, not New York, but certain parts of the country like Idaho, Utah, uh, some parts of California had a ridiculous run up during the pandemic irrational run-up, right? People in, my friend in Utah told me he was selling properties for 100% of ARV, the after repaired value, that needed a lot of work. It didn't make sense. He told me if my grandmother wanted to buy the house at this price, I would never sell it to her. And maybe 20 to 30% crazy jump over the course of the pandemic. And then when rates went up the end of the summer of 2022, back down 30% on a lot of the higher end. Now, higher end in Utah is like over $500,000. But this guy, unfortunately, had a bunch of flips going, and he lost money on six of them. So that's going on in certain parts of the country. Idaho, same kind of thing. Crazy run-up in Boise and Coeur d'Alene um, during the pandemic. Irrational, made no sense. Numbers that didn't make sense. People had never seen them. And then right after when there was an excuse for it to go down because the market had gone up and there were the rates had gone up and there were less buyers, but the, the market took a dump. Now, in New York, I haven't seen that, but I have seen – changes. Now there's going to be changes regardless, right? When you go from 3% rate to 7% rate, there are going to be fewer buyers, right? But the best way I've ever heard it uh, explained to me, and I believe that this is still holding firm in New York, is if in any given area, there's a thousand buyers who can qualify when rates are 3%, and there's 500 buyers who can qualify when rates are 5%, and there's 200 buyers who can qualify when rates are 7%, it doesn't really matter much if there's only 50 houses for sale. We are still in a reduced supply uh, scenario in, in New York, for sure, and in most of the country, right? Um, the pandemic stopped a lot of construction. It stopped a lot of movement, um, obviously moratoriums that stopped foreclosure and stopped eviction, slowed the whole market. We haven't caught up yet. Certainly not New York in the state that takes the longest for foreclosure and eviction. So we still haven't caught up. Now, eventually, could it catch up? Yes. And could the market go down more? Yes. What I am seeing, sorry. Trying to shut everything off before I get on, but it doesn't always work. What I'm seeing is rates at the top of the market, so I'd say around seven hundred thousand dollars. That's top of the market in a lot of areas I operate in. Obviously, it's very low if you're talking about buying a a, a three bedroom condo in Manhattan or a a three thousand square foot in East Hampton. That's ridiculous, right? You can't buy a, a an outhouse there for those. But in my area, you know, most of the things I sell are in the five, sixes, sevens. The, my ARVs. Um, I've seen a softening around seven the seven hundred thousand dollars mark. So a house that maybe was going to sell for seven hundred thousand dollars in before last summer now is maybe going for six fifty, and I'm figuring in all almost all of my ARVs I'm figuring lower now. The truth is at this point where we're almost at the end of March, two thousand twenty three, a lot of the comps, the newer comps, went into contract after the summer, right after July August. So until now it was difficult because the comps that I was getting the comp, and when I say comps I mean comparable sales. So I'm, 
when I look to, to value a property, I'm going to look in an area, I'm going to look for comparable sales, so similar style, you know, if it's colonial, I'm going to look for a colonial, similar bedrooms and bathrooms, similar square footage, if I can get that, but although we can't in most places, similar bedrooms and bathrooms and style, similar lot size, I'm looking at, comp, that's comparable, so those are comps, so I want to just explain what comps mean. So when, I'm look, when I was looking at comps before, a lot of them went into contract before the market turned. Now a lot of the the the, the comps that are closing went into contract after, so they're, they're more uh, uh, applicable. And I'm seeing like a softening at certain levels, but I'm figuring maybe a 5 to 10% drop in my ARV when I figure it out. And I figure if I'm wrong, then I'll make more money. And if I'm right, then I protected myself. So that's what I am seeing. But some of the things you have to do when the market is going down and understand real estate markets are always cyclical. We just don't know where on the cycle we are or where it's going, right? We don't know, right? It could stay flat, right? It doesn't have to go up and down like crazy. Sometimes you're at the peak and it could be there for six months. Um, and we haven't seen a drop like we saw in 2008. That was a really unprecedented event. I'm happy to explain. I was in the mortgage business at the time, and I can give you my personal opinion as to why that happened. I think it's pretty obvious why it happened. There was just a crazy amount of money that was available to people that weren't putting any money down, had no income, no job, no assets. Um, that's not the case today. We're in a much more solid system. So if somebody's buying a property, they're putting in some kind of money into it, so they um, they're not going to walk away like we saw in 2008, where some where a bus driver bought 40. 40 pre-construction pre condos and when with no money down and then when the market dropped because he just wanted to flip them for appreciation when the market dropped, just walked away. That, that's not going to happen again. Well, at least not 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 that way. The truth is, I don't know, maybe it will happen again, but it's not happening that way now. So we've seen a little bit of softening um, and I have found that where I price my properties a little lower, I'm getting what I think I should have gotten. Where I price them higher, I make a mistake, I'm getting less than what I got. So I think there's still a lot of people looking for bargains out there. There are not a lot of houses available. I just uh, uh, listed something I had two open houses for it. I got about 20 offers on it um, with two thirds of them being above asking. Um, and I think I'm gonna do great with it, but with that property. But you have to be aware of where that is. So that's a property that I thought was like a five and a quarter house. I listed it for $4.99 I'm just I'm going to contract at five fifty dollars now, more than I thought I would get with it from it. So that's good. But you have to be aware of what's going on in your area, and every area is different. Every now, I'm not just talking about like an area, like Elmont. Elmont seems like a simple area. It's had large appreciation because they, they built the UBS arena there for the Islanders to play in. And more importantly, I think, uh, nobody cares if the stadium's there, so they're going to put in a, uh, a Long Island Railroad stop, which was always the knock on Elmont. It never had a Long Island Railroad stop, you know. Valley Stream has three, and uh, West Hempstead is two. And these areas were like, well, we, they're more convenient. Um, and Elmont was like, you're in the middle of nowhere. You got to get to Franklin Square or you got to go somewhere else. So um, I, I, I think that the Long Island Railroad, which is not even open yet, is going to have a, is the reason why this thing's appreciated. But, and also people felt like there was investment in the area. But even within Elmont, there are sub pockets where things are better and, and worse. And you need to really be very, very um, narrow when you comp out a property. Don't look at other areas because that area might have more people looking in there than in yours. So I think you need to get narrow on your comps. You need to adjust your buy price when you're making offers to sellers lower. And you need to, I don't know what the hell's going on with my phone today. Um, and you need to be aware that if you're more cautious, you do run the risk of losing out to somebody else who's not going to be as cautious as you. But if the market shifts, you'll be, you won't be hurt as much. You won't be hurt at all, right? So that's really my thoughts on what to do in a down market. Obviously, I, I, I'm going to talk for about an hour on this later. Um, if you're interested in <coughs> finding out more about the RIA or you're interested in finding out, I think the RIA information is below. I hope it is. If not, hit me with a comment and I'm happy to answer. Um, if you're interested in all the ways that can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com or learn to flip and wholesale.com. And if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes will really help my SEO. So I really appreciate everyone who's been liking and a lot more people been watching. Uh, the numbers really keep going up and I appreciate it. A lot more subscribers on YouTube. So thank you. Please share. Uh, get more people subscribed. It helps me. Um, and I'm here just to answer questions and help you. The point of this channel is just to help you. Um, so you can, I, I post five times a week. I almost never know what the hell to talk about. So please post a comment below with any question you have. If it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered recently, I'll send you links to a video or videos on it. And if it's something I haven't covered in a long time or I've never covered before, like I never really spoke about this topic before, um, I'll do a brand new video on it. So I really appreciate everyone watching, everyone liking. Thank you 
very, very much. I appreciate all of you.